Thirty years ago, on the 22nd of June 1977, the Congregational Methodist and Presbyterian Churches came together to form the Uniting Church in Australia. What a week of celebrations that was, with the inaugural service live on ABC television and with thousands of local celebrations the following Sunday, the 26th of June. Suddenly, the Uniting Church emblem appeared in every community across Australia. Now 30 years on, it's worth reminding ourselves what sort of church the Uniting Church was planned to be. We are very much part of mainstream Christianity, linked through our common faith in Jesus Christ, with the Church of the Ages and with the worldwide Church of today. The Christian traditions which most shape us are reformed, evangelical and ecumenical. I reckon there are 10 characteristics which shape our identity as the Uniting Church. First and foremost, we are a church of local congregations and faith communities. The backbone of our church is our more than 300,000 members who between them, young and old, maintain the faith magnificently through local worship, witness and service and support the wider ministries of presbyteries, synods and assembly. We are also a well-organised church nationally. Our Australianness is found in many of our emphases, not least in the Indigenous arm of our church, the Congress, in our renowned remote areas ministries of frontier services, and in our increasingly multicultural and cross-cultural congregations. The community services work of uniting care is everywhere, the largest non-government network of services in the country. As a church which deliberately took the name Uniting, we cannot be anything other than ecumenical, committed to working with other churches in Australia and overseas. We are active members of the state and national councils of churches and of four international bodies. Our reputation internationally is very high. Our presence and participation in the World Council of Churches, for instance, is far more than what's expected of a church of our size. International mission is a core value of the Uniting Church. Our partner churches overseas don't need missionaries from us these days so much, but what they do need is our expertise, our practical assistance, our training and our solidarity. Their priorities are our priorities. So things like development aid, peacemaking, justice seeking and combined advocacy are key parts of our overseas mission work these days. Fifty years ago, we didn't need to worry about church growth in Australia, but huge cultural shifts of secularism, materialism and individualism have dramatically changed that. We now need to be far more deliberate in inviting people to faith, in seeking conversion, in living out a bold and faithful witness as followers of Christ. Personal relationship with God is at the heart of our faith, but so is God's love for every human being and for the whole of creation. So we are very much a whole of life church, committed to working for people's well-being, for justice and peace. God calls us to love our neighbours and thus we directly provide community services, but we also directly advocate for changes in government policies so that people's needs will be better met. The Uniting Church is governed not by powerful individuals, but by elected councils, in which there are always at least as many lay members as those who are ministers. One of the unique developments of the past 30 years has been our method of seeking consensus in our decision making, a method we've now exported to several international church bodies and overseas churches. We are a church of rich diversity, and not just in languages and cultures. Of course, this creates a challenge for us to hold together as one church in face of different convictions and different ways of being church. Only by holding strongly to our common faith in God's love for each of us, the salvation brought by Jesus for each of us, and the gifts and guidance of the Holy Spirit for each of us, 
are we able to keep meeting that challenge? We are a church very much open to God's leading of us. We have a firm commitment to the best of Christian scholarship. John Wesley's principle of discerning God's will through the scriptures, Christian tradition, the use of reason and our human experience continues to guide our discernment. We have a good number of vibrant and growing congregations, perhaps more than we've had for several years, and they come from across our diversity, but there's not near enough of them. Two of the things we have going for us are our high degree of credibility in the Australian community and what seems to be an emerging new openness to spiritual life among many Australians. But of course, the greatest thing we have going for us our greatest resource and greatest inspiration is God and our faith that God is loving us, guiding us, upholding and leading us forward. When our faith and conviction are strong, then we cannot help but be a confident and joyful church, a church which is attractive to all sorts of people. 30 years old, celebrate well and thank you for the part you play in this extraordinary fellowship of Christians we proudly call the Uniting Church in Australia.